I can't tell you how many friends I have that don't use their vacation time. They work in corporate jobs. They don't take their vacation time. Welcome back. I'm Tedward. Welcome to Oceanside, California, and welcome back to another Honda Civic Type R. Honda was nice enough to loan me this Type R while I'm out here in California doing a lot of work. And I gotta say, my work has really turned into more of a vacation than a business trip. But it's very bizarre that my job has turned into what it is. So let's get started, take a little cruise, and let's talk about just making the most of your time, making the most of your life. And I'm starting just ever so slightly to figure out how to make myself happy. <laughs> and that's no easy task for someone like me. So 10 years ago, I was coming out of engineering school. All right, maybe, yeah, no, more than that. Oh my God, I'm so old. <laughs> A little over 10 years ago, I'm kind of out of engineering school. I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do with my life and I'm just taking whatever job I can get, essentially. Okay, by the way, this seems insane. These are both one ways. That just seems like a normal street. If I guess I'm just in the center. Sure, good job, Oceanside signage. And I'm taking whatever jobs I can get and I end up falling into this role in a corporate gig that I actually really liked. I found myself traveling the world in the garment industry, going to like Bangladesh, India, Vietnam, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, China, wherever your clothes are made, that's where I would be. And I did like that job and I got laid off from that job because essentially we worked ourselves out of a job and the company, you know, companies change. Big corporations, they, they hire big consulting groups, they come in, they slash budgets and they're like, hey man, you guys cost a lot of money. Um, and that was fine. And then I just never really settled into a position that like, struck me again because I went from this insane lifestyle of being on the road flying like 200,000 miles a year to just like going to an office and and working in like way too normal of an atmosphere and I really hated it. Now, I always loved cars and I was doing all this YouTube stuff, but it just it took me until I was literally desperate to get to a point where I could, I could stomach the idea of quitting my job, giving up like a decent salary because I'm pretty conservative in terms of risk taking when it comes to like my own finances. And it was really scary to say like, hey, I'm not gonna have a steady paycheck. And also I'm not positive what my paycheck is going to be. Man, this place is just so cool. I love it. I have some friends that live here and they've always been nice enough to put me up. Unfortunately, I don't get to see them this time because I got to go down to an event. But anyway, I, 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 I now am in this position where it was a struggle and it was scary. And I think everyone's success, especially when you look at somebody that you that you deem successful, their success always looks so instantaneous, effortless, like, oh my God, they just made it. And I, I do not feel like that's the case for the people who are living it. I mean, even the most successful YouTubers I know, they, they really bust themselves in order to, to make their lives happen the way they do. They're still working incredibly hard, even though they may have your dream job. And that doesn't mean they're miserable, but some of them are. Some of them are like having a hard time. Some of them, even though they're living like this incredible social media life, they're, they're not necessarily living their own dream. And this is where I've started to realize like you just need to make that your mindset. And I don't wanna be, I'm not, oh man, oh, I'm not one of those guys. I'm really not, because I'm so cynical. I'm not one of those like, if you wish it, you'll get it. I'm not gonna tell you to make a dream board. But what I am saying is that like, there's so much crummy stuff that happens and and you can kind of choose how it affects you in some way and like this trip for example this trip actually has been a lot we've been out here in california i've driven like at least a dozen cars and made a ton of videos and to any normal car enthusiast waking up with lamborghinis and maseratis in your driveway like how dare you how dare you even begin to complain and and like but when you've been filming nonstop day to day to day to day, back to back to back to back, it does get kind of exhausting. But like, I had to take a step back and be like, wow, like, look at this. Look at that, 
this is what I get to do right now. I don't have to like get up and go to the office. I don't have to like answer to anybody. And if I choose to film or not to film, that's up to me. And I started to learn that like I'm capable of meeting my own targets, meeting my own schedules. And I think most of us actually are. Most of us are pretty good at that. And I'm actually better at it working for myself than I am working in a corporate environment because it's like, it's my financial situation. It's my life on the line if it goes well or doesn't go well. But I was having a conversation with a friend in Santa Monica at dinner last night and we were walking up the pier at night doing touristy things because sometimes I really just love a good like tourist outing and being around that Ferris wheel under the lights, it's pretty cool, okay, I'll take it. I know anyone who lives in LA is like, ew, gross, I'm not going to the Santa Monica Pier, but like, I am in. I'm doing more touristy stuff because I think it's fun. But I asked like, what do you want out of the next year? And he's like, I wanna travel more, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. I'm like, well, what's stopping you? Why aren't you doing it? And it's like, it's always the same thing. It's always, well, when I have a little more money, when I have a little more time, I hate to break it to you, but, a lot of times there isn't gonna be any more money. There isn't gonna be any more time. Like some of some of you may end up becoming like ultra wealthy. Like you may hit it huge. You may end up with like the greatest financial situation known to man. But chances are, chances are we're all just kind of like doing our thing and we're gonna make the most of where we're at. And a lot of times there isn't just this thing where like, well, once I'm settled, once I'm this, once I'm that, like sometimes we're at where we're at and maybe there'll be growth and it might be like 10%, 20%, 30% growth. But like we cannot all live in this mindset like we're about to become billionaires. It's not gonna happen. We're not gonna become billionaires, most of us. I can say that, like statistically, I can probably say that. (laughs) with confidence, okay? I'm not trying to break your heart, but what I'm saying is like, if there's things you wanna do, start figuring out how to how to carve that into your life now because like there may not be some like big end of book payoff where up oh, and then they lived happily ever after. Like if you're miserable right now, start working on it because there's not gonna be just like this sudden change. If you wanna go travel, book a trip. You don't need to go to Monaco and spend $200,000 on a box seat for a Formula One Grand Prix. But you know what? You can probably get in your car and drive five hours to somewhere beautiful. Like, look at these people. This guy is sitting in a Volkswagen Vanagon, staring at the ocean with his presumable wife. I'm pretty sure they're having a good time. All it was is a tank of gas. Maybe he rolled down the street and just came here. But like, find things that just make you happy and start carving it out. I am the king of putting things off. I'm the king of saying, nah, it'll happen when it happens. When there's more money, when there's more time, when I feel like it's right. Just go, just do it. And it's tough because sometimes it feels like you're putting yourself in financial jeopardy. I don't want you to go like max out a credit card so you can go like live this dream vacation. But like, I bet you could scrounge up a little bit of cash and find a little bit of time to get something done that you wanna do. I can't tell you how many friends I have that don't use their vacation time. They work in corporate jobs, they don't take their vacation time. And then when they do, they take like a day or three days at a time. Take two weeks, go away. You are not beholden to some corporation that will lay you off in the blink of an eye. I assure you, it's happened to me a couple times. In the blink of an eye, you are nothing to these people. You should definitely work hard, you should do your job, you should make the most of what you're doing and what you have, but I assure you, if you have sick days, if you have vacation time, if you have mental health days, take them. Take them, take the time, because this is all we got. You may not have a hundred grand to blow on a vacation someday. Chances are you're not gonna make triple, four times, five times more money than you make right now. You gotta start figuring out how you're gonna spend your time. Do it alone, go on a vacation by yourself. You don't have to wait for anybody. You can go do this by yourself. So. That's, that's just where I'm at, that's where I'm at. I'm in this beautiful place and I'm enjoying it and I'm trying to embrace the fact that, oh, that's a bummer, you just stepped in a big old puddle. I'm trying to embrace the fact that like, I have to enjoy myself and I have to find ways to enjoy myself because no one's gonna enjoy it for me. 
if I am out in the most beautiful places in the world and I feel like I'm working and everyone watching my videos is like, wow, that's the greatest and I don't feel good, well, guess what? That's my problem. That's my problem to solve. And that means that I need to start figuring out, look at the size of this dog, that is wonderful. You know, I'm gonna find the joy in a Great Dane with a guy walking it down the boardwalk. That's it, that's it, that's it. It's the little things, man. Ah, so in the next couple weeks, like there's gonna be a lot of videos that are in California. I have only been here for a li- like a little over two weeks. So I don't live here, I didn't move to California. I'm just spending some time and I'm filming as much as I can and I'm making the most of the opportunity while it is cold and miserable and the supercars are tucked away in Massachusetts. So that's the deal. Now I'm gonna head down to the Honda Accord launch in Encinitas and try to go enjoy that because man, I'm gonna go down there, be with some YouTuber friends, have some fun, drive a cool car that a lot of people are gonna buy in the coming future. And and that's the deal. So. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I know I'm in a Type R and I just took you on a on a, on a six mile per hour drive, but man, that was a six mile per hour drive that I'm gonna savor for a while. Don't forget to respect the drive and I'll see you in the next one. Go find something that makes you happy. Try to figure out what about your day right now is good because I guarantee there's something, even if you're somewhere you don't wanna be, find joy, find Find humor even in your cynicism. It's okay to be a cynic, but like just find a way to smile about the crummy waiter, about slipping and falling on something, about dropping your ice cream. Like find the joy in the dumb stuff and let's not scrape this over giant railroad tracks. Oh my goodness.